on this episode. There you go, you got your first hiss. You can't touch her. She turns into Wolverine. This is a very, very large lump for Tabitha. I'm certainly not taking the surgery lightly. I'm scared and I don't want to lose her. So that's all the big mass. I think we're really seeing the tip of the iceberg. First incision. What the hell's going on, huh, my friend? I am not quite defeated. And if you end up bombing it on me, it'll be worth it. <laughs> but my optimism is going down. Come on, please don't have an iron stomach. But first... What are we looking at here? All those toes are bent right round. We've got to try and help this poor little dog. The real work begins. Ooh, the joint is just falling apart. Good boy. Good boy, Pepsi. In outer Sydney, brave rescue dog Pepsi has had a tough start to life. His front right paw got crushed and it was never taken to a vet to be examined or healed, therefore he just limps on three legs. Today, foster carer Will is bringing Pepsi in to see Rob, hoping something can be done to help the gentle, lovable Samoid. I'm a little bit worried, but at the same time, I think whatever needs to be done has to be done. Hello, how are you? How are you? Hey, Rob. Nice to meet you, Rob. Hello, gorgeous. You are very beautiful, please. You know, this is the only breed standard that actually says friendly to all mankind. He even loves me. How good's that? <laughs> and they really are. They're a beautiful breed. Oh, gosh. We've got a leg problem. Gorgeous. Come on in. We'll have a look at it. Let's go. So, how old is he? Uh, Pepsi's two and a half years old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, I know, that's a bad... Oh, 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 oh. See, it's okay, it's okay. It's all right, it's all right. I'm having a feel of Pepsi's bad leg. Yes, the atrophy is obvious, and there's something going on really bad in the wrist and foot area, and Pepsi doesn't like me touching it too much. So, when did this occur? Well, I believe he was involved in a car accident at a really young age. Right. I believe the wound injuries were self-healed. The owners never took him to a vet. Not really self-healed, are they? I mean, he's got contracture of all the ligaments and tendons. And, yep. and he's got atrophy, you know, a very small leg compared to this side because he's not been able to use it for so long. He's got a bad callus at the front. Um, if it stayed as a callus, at least that would be okay. But the bones are going to come through that callus. He can't keep walking on the front of the foot all the time and putting it down. I know he doesn't put it down often, but when he does, he's putting it down that way instead of that way. We'll get some x-rays today yeah. and we'll see if we'll take him right through to the very end today or not. We'll just make a decision once we see the x-rays. Very good. You're gorgeous. You love me? Yes, I love you too. You do. You're gorgeous. It's been severe trauma to this foot and no one's looked after it. And it's been long standing now. So we've got to try and help this poor little dog get this foot into some form of function. I'm gonna do a stress x-ray where I can push the foot right down and separate all the bones. So we can see the individual bones and joints. I need to get a clearer view, work out which ones have been broken and have calloused up the wrong way. Ready? Oh my gosh, what are we looking at here? Oh my god. G'day Heather. How are you going? How's the Tabitha doing? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Hi Tabitha. How are you doing in there? There you go, you got your first kiss. <laughs> Do you want to come on through? Yeah, thank you. Come on through. At Southpaw's Referral Hospital in Melbourne, Surgeon Ben's day is off to a shaky start. Should we say hello? Yep. She's very feisty and she doesn't give in that easy. <laughs> she's just letting you know she's in charge. She's yep. telling the vet who's boss. Yep. Tabitha doesn't like going to the vet anymore. Her claws come out, she growls and hisses. You can't touch her. 
she turns into Wolverine. Hey, Tabitha. Not too happy to see me today. Heather has brought in her feisty 11-year-old for major surgery. That's if Ben can get anywhere near her. She's a rescue kitty cat. Her and her brother were thrown out of a moving car in an old plastic bag. Unfortunately, Tabitha's brother didn't survive, but she did. She's quite a little fighter. She's already been hissing me a couple of times in there, so I know mm. she's got a good fight in her. Everyone's gonna have to know their place. <laughs> I don't mind being told who's the boss. It's good to know your boundaries when you start out any consultation and know this is where I can go and this is where I can't go, and Tabitha was not afraid to show me that. You have to behave yourself and do things what she says. I've got two young boys at home and they're always in charge, so I'm used to being told what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Today, cranky Tabitha needs all the help she can get from Ben. Her health is in serious danger. I'll get that nasty lump looked at. When my vet checked her over, she said to me, Heather, have you seen this lump? And it was almost like a tennis ball. Lumps do not come up that much in a month unless there's something bad. <laughs> hey, so um, how's that lump doing that she's got? It's still there. Okay. When I looked at it yesterday, I thought it may have grown more. Okay. So we do have the results from the sample we took. Yep. And it has come back as something cancerous. So what we need to do today is we're going to get her into theatre, yep. remove this lump, mm -hmm. um, and take very good care of her. If we can remove this lump, we potentially can extend her life. And there is a small, but importantly, a chance that we can cure this with surgery. And this mass involves from about the last rib up until about the seventh and eighth rib. And when we rotate this image, we can see how far it goes towards the sternum as well, this area here. This is a large lump, a uh, very, very large lump for Tabitha. And I'm certainly not taking the surgery lightly. Cancer is a really emotional thing because it can cause a whole lot of pain and suffering. I know you're worried about things. How are you feeling about the plan for today? Um, I'm really scared and worried about her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind if Tabitha is upset and angry at me. As long as we can get her happy and healthy and then back home with Heather, that's the, that's the aim. I know you do everything that you can for her. We'll put all that power behind making sure we get a good outcome for her. You're right to be worried. Um, and I know she's, she means a lot to you, eh? Yeah, she, she means the world to me. She's, she's my little girl. I'm scared I'm gonna lose her. Oh my gosh, what are we looking at here? In outer Sydney, Rob is shocked at the severity of rescue Samoid Pepsi's deformed leg. Oh my God. Foster carer Will is anxious to find out if Pepsi's leg can be saved. So the initial x-rays, you know, with the foot just cramped in position on the plate, all those toes are bent right round. Some look dislocated as well. If you look on this next shot, you can see the contracture and there's just bones from the toes all over the place. And that bone is ready to come through. It's nearly, nearly through there nearly through the skin now. But when we lay the foot flat and put pressure on it and do a stress x-ray, everything goes in the line. So this is awesome. This is really, really good news. What we can do, Will, I can put this into a splint today. We can't make more skin, but Mother Nature will do it for us if we keep stretching it. And hopefully that'll be the end result, that he can put all his weight on the pads and on the foot. Then we might assess there may be some surgery in the future. I cannot promise you for sure. Will, if you're happy with that plan, that's how we'll proceed. Oh, it sounds great. Our first job is get him to walk on these pads, but with a fair bit of work and an ounce of luck, we might get there. <sighs> Just trying to get a splint that comes around there is going to be the hard thing. So putting so much pressure on this, the big fear is that you could break it, but I've got to stretch it beyond that elastic limit on that area. 
so we're just trying to protect the open sores and try and keep them as happy as possible simply because you know, the whole thing's going to be under pressure. In between the toes as well? Yep, if you can. What Anne is doing now is packing it with cotton wool to try and protect it and hold it into as much of a foot shape as we can, as a normal canine foot shape. Okay, let's wrap it. Rob's hoping splinting will stretch the tendons and ligaments and help coax the wrist joint into a more normal position. There you go. All done, baby boy. The risky part is that he could get pressure sores because you don't usually put a cast on with the tissues under pressure. You know, and they're pushing against that, so I'll be amazed if he doesn't have some pressure sores. Okay. Hey, Will. Here he is. Oh, Pepsi. I'll put him that way for you. It might be easier for him. That's it. So he's in a sling with his little cast put in there and yep. bent the foot up. I put the sling in such a way that it's on his shoulders, not on his neck and he'll be able to support him quite well and hold that leg up. Pepsi will have to tolerate the sling for at least a month. If Rob's ambitious solution fails, he may have no option but to amputate the leg. Okay. I'll let you go. He's been Thank you. Heavy after a while. Thank you for everything. Pleasure. Good to see you. I'll get the door for you. All the best. Thank you. See you later on, Will. See you. Bye-bye. At Sash Emergency in Western Sydney, You're a good boy. Eh? Worried owner Sally has rushed in with her adored Pomeranian Chihuahua cross, Zach. Where are you? Hmm? Found some grapes that I had in the fridge. I thought I'd have them. And I started to eat them and Zach's looking at me and I thought, okay, these should be healthy, you know. And I gave it to him and I was really surprised that he ate it and I was happy about it. And I thought, oh, great. He's still looking at me and I gave him a few more, about three or four. Then I looked on the Google to see, you know, if it's okay. And then highly toxic, they can die from them. You're a good little boy. Thought, oh my gosh, you know, hugged him, said how sorry I was, little Zachy. I'm really, really sorry I did this to you. I'm thinking this is it, you know. I'm killing my own beautiful little dog that I love so much. All right, Mr. Zach, why did you eat grapes? Emergency specialist Mara is on duty and straight away begins a head-to-tail check of the little four-year-old. That was a very silly thing to do. I hope they were sweet and crunchy and tasty. Otherwise, no real reason to eat them, right? Grapes are something that we've learned can be toxic in dogs. Now, it's a, it's a little hard, my friend, to listen to you with my stethoscope when we're cuddling like this. Can, can we not be bestest friends? Can we just be good friends for a moment? Thank you. Some dogs can actually develop a toxicity that negatively affects the kidneys, and other dogs could eat a grape every day for the rest of their life and never have a problem. Okay, let's see how your heart sounds. And there's no way to know which dog is gonna be the lucky dog and which dog won't be so lucky. But your heart sounds pretty good. Beautiful painting. All right, my friend, you look pretty stable. I think we just need to get the grapes out of you not going to be your favourite part of the day, I'm sorry. Mara is hoping an injection of apomorphine will cause Zach to vomit the toxic grapes. Okay. See, that didn't take you very long. Now, it's a waiting game. All right, my friend. Now we give you time. What do you think? A watched dog never vomits. Just get to stand here and wait. Too happy to see me today. At South Paws Hospital in Melbourne, Ben's still not having any luck winning over feisty Tabitha. So he now wants to get her straight to surgery to check out her rapidly growing lump. You'll be brave now, hey? I love you, puppy. It's time for an emotional Heather to say goodbye. You be good. Don't bite them or scratch them. You know she's not going to be good. You can't promise no. that. <laughs> Come on, friend, you're coming with me. I do feel confident that she's in the right place. It's just I'm scared and I don't want to lose her. 
because she's my tempest, my little girl. Just don't want to lose her. Thank you. You are so brave. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Tabitha's now fully anaesthetised. It's a big mass. It's really stuck in there. That lump has grown, hasn't it? Everyone is shocked at the size of the lump. It measures about the size of a large orange, which is a fairly large size. I think we're really seeing the tip of the iceberg. Before removing the lump, the first step is an ultrasound, so Ben's colleague can work his magic. Sebastian, our anaesthetist, has got a special interest in pain management. What he's doing is what we call a quadratus lumborum nerve block. It's like a spell that maybe Harry Potter does, injecting a little bit of local anaesthetic to the nerves that supply your sensation to your body wall. It's kind of like an epidural if you're having a cesarean section. Coming in hot. With Ben and his team now ready, nerves have set in for Heather. She's already lost one beloved cat to cancer. Tabitha had a big sister who she absolutely adored. Missy, unfortunately, she got a, a very aggressive cancer of the stomach. The cancer had gone to her brain and I had to have her put to sleep. And that's just three and a half years ago. And when Tabitha had this lump, and saw that and I thought, oh, we, I can't, can't do this again. I just can't lose my little girl again. Can we get the table up just a touch as well? That's good, thank you very much. This is all the tumour in here, this structure, big structure sort of around here. So that's all the big mass. It's time to go to work. And once we start, everyone knows where they're supposed to be. First incision, it's almost like they're conducting an orchestra. Main concerns, I suppose, are related to her pre-existing anemia. Anemia is a term we use to describe when the percentage of red cells in our total blood volume is reduced. Red blood cells are really, really important for carrying oxygen around the body. Did we get a repeat blood count on her? I'll just have to get the results up for you. One moment. 22. Because that's come down a bit. Yeah. Given the fact that this cat is already anemic, we want to try and limit as much as possible any bleeding. To remove the lump, Ben needs to cut through several of Tabitha's ribs using some practical know-how. If you're into gardening, cutting through a cat's rib is very much like pruning roses. Ben has to be extra vigilant to avoid the large blood vessels that run down the back of every rib. There's a few little blood vessels in here, and I just want to be careful. Okay, scissors. My heart and my throat, because the big worry is just, you know, have we done more harm than good? It's always the worry. In outer Sydney, rescue dog Pepsi has been in a corrective cast for four weeks, and it's time for Rob to see if there's any improvement in the angle of the young Samoid's badly deformed leg. In this case, there was no right way to put the cast on because the whole thing was so deformed and we're trying to use the cast really to put pressure the other way. I don't know how that's gonna go. We're about to find out. Last thing I want to see is like a dead foot with lots of pus and tissues of the dead because that's going to then mean amputation of this limb. Now, the piece de resistance, let's see what's under the bandage, AM. Okay, yuck. So we've got some pus there where that saw was. As soon as I lift the bandage, it's just green pus. Yeah, yellow green pus, oh no, the foot's gone, the crotic, it's gone dead and I'm not going to be able to save this foot. We achieved something, we've got some degree of mobility of that joint again, 
So that's good, but it's going to be a surgical case from here. We've just got to clean up some of this pressure sores that we've got. And then I think we're going to ankylose that with either a plate or some pins. I think we're going to get there. I can see some light now at the end of this tunnel. So because this is so deformed, I want to take some intraoperative x-rays. Now, this is very deformed foot. I need to make sure that everything's in the right position when we put the pins in. So I'll have a nurse taking these radiographs as we operate. So we can keep checking to make sure the pins are placed in the right spot. Yep, all good. And Just cut now. Cut now, perfect. This is not a curative surgery. This is a salvage surgery. So we can salvage what we can and have this leg hopefully in enough position where the dog can use it as a bit of a splint when it's walking, a bit of support for the other good leg. Oh, come on, a bit of purchase. A little bit of purchase. Can you vomit? Can you, can you vomit right in there? Yeah, just go and bring it up. At SASH in Western Sydney, emergency specialist Mara is hoping an apomorphine injection will start to work quickly and Zach will vomit his deadly snack of toxic grapes. Please, let's vomit. Just do it. We just want to get Mr. Zach's stomach empty uh, because if the grapes are in there, the sooner we can get them out, the better he's going to be. Owner Sally is devastated after giving what she thought was a healthy treat to her precious boy. And who would have known that grapes are so highly toxic to them? Check before you give them anything to eat, you know, <laughs> even if you think it's super healthy, but not for them. Hi, what do you think? What do you think? I know, I know, you just want to shake it off. Huh? So far, Zach hasn't vomited with that first dose of apomorphine, which is not what I would want to see happening, but it's not uncommon. So we will try a second dose and see if that is enough to kickstart things in the right direction. Oh boy, mister. Okay. Oh, so brave. Yes. Okay. Will you please vomit? Pretty please? With grapes on top? He's showing not the least sign of being nauseous, which makes me kind of want to bang my head against the wall a little bit. So it's time to get creative and see if we can do anything else that might make him nauseous. <sighs> All right, we need a stool. Time is now critical, with Mara desperate to try anything to make Zach vomit. So, things that make me nauseous? Spinning in circles. <laughs> what the hell's going on, huh, my friend? Don't worry, you're not the only one dizzy. <laughs> okay, that's enough for me. Woo! Take him. Mara's definitely feeling nauseous, but as for Zach... Oh, don't tell me I went through that. You're not gonna vomit, darling. The grapes are staying put. I'll just lip smack, that's it. We started the licking and the swallowing. A bit of licking is the only progress so far. I know, Zach, you can do it. It's okay, just let it go. Please. I am not quite defeated, <laughs> but my optimism is going down. I know it's awful, and if you end up vomiting on me, it'll be worth it. <laughs> Mara's refusing to give up on her stubborn little patient. Come on, please don't have an iron stomach. The purchase. I don't want to take too big a piece, I don't want to damage the bone. Just got to get just enough. In outer Sydney, Rob is starting surgery to try to correct rescue Samoid Pepsi's shockingly deformed leg. So we're starting at the humerus, it's the, you know, your upper arm, and we're harvesting some special type of bone to um, try and use that inside the actual joint, the wrist joint to stop the wrist joint from being a joint, really. It's going to be solid mass, we hope, 
when it all heals in six to eight weeks. We've got a nice little piece of bone there and that just goes into some saline. We don't want it to dry out and now we'll sew it up and then get to work. The real work begins. I just want to make Pepsi's life as happy as I possibly can for as long as possible. And that's what I'd like to end up with. Gosh, there's a big push to end up with that. So I need to pin through there into there. Pepsi's foot realignment will be in two stages. First, the harvested piece of bone will be inserted to make the ankle rigid. Then pins will be used to keep the toes in place. So we're just making our way into that wrist joint itself. And that's where we'll put our bone harvest that we've got. Ooh. So I'm just curating or scraping, if you like. The joint is just falling apart. Bones here are very, very soft. The problem is it may release the pins. Now that's my biggest worry. Please don't have an iron stomach. Please. At Sash in Western Sydney, Mara has met her match. <sighs> Pint-sized Zach still won't vomit the toxic dose of grapes. Give in, my friend. I promise it's okay. Mara's hoping it will be third time lucky, so Zach can avoid potential catastrophic damage to his kidneys from the toxic fruit. That's right, you just shake it off. <laughs> I have not had many patients resist vomiting after having a third dose of apomorphine. Come on. Nothing seems to be working, so it's time to switch to plan B. I'm gonna try the creamy tuna scented treat and see if that makes our friend decide to vomit. Again, this attempt, anything at all that might make you vomit, I mean, if you're feeling at least a bit nauseous and you smell something fishy, let's try that and see if that triggers things for him. Hi. You want some, some smelly foods? What if I put a little tiny bit? in your mouth. With the grapes staying put... You're just not vomiting for us. Mara has one last trick. If we can't get the stomach to empty as the first part of decontamination, the second part is giving activated charcoal, which is going to bind to the toxin that is still in his stomach and hopefully prevent it from being absorbed into his system. So fingers crossed that the charcoal at least will help decrease the risk for him. Mr. Friend, we're gonna try and keep you clean. I don't know if we'll succeed. Oh my gosh, it's dripping everywhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> Giving charcoal to a dog, it tends not to be a smooth and simple process. You can do it. Swallow, swallow. Is nice? Zach is a dog that's going to need us to really help him. Oh, so brave. Oh, so brave. So Anna's just really carefully cutting through the ribs as we go. At Southpaw's Hospital in Melbourne, specialist surgeon Ben is at a crucial stage of Tabitha's lump removal surgery. The blood vessels sit just behind the ribs, so we kind of go one space at a time just to make sure that we um, control bleeding. To reach the lump, Ben eventually has to cut through seven of Tabitha's ribs. Making nice progress. And then just a last little cut just here. Finally. It's a big mass. The massive lump, almost as big as Tabitha's head, is revealed. It measures about the size of a large orange. And what we do is we send that across to our local laboratory. I'm hoping to be able to say to Heather, not something we need to worry about, and we've got it all. So I think the biggest thing with these tumour removals is once you've removed them, is just to be really careful and check your bed where you've removed the tumour from to make sure we haven't left any blood vessels bleeding. Kind of go, yes, the mass looks really interesting, but you have to make sure we focus back onto our kitty cat. With the lump out, 
Ben now has the tricky task of trying to stitch up the gaping space. Can we please get some suture to close? Can we get some uh, 2 zero PDS, please? If I don't close it, we're going to be left with a gaping wound that causes a hernia. And that can potentially result in abdominal organs popping out the side of the body wall. And that could be catastrophic for Tabitha. You can see there, then we've got a complete seal on our chest. And the next part is worrying about our body wall. And we're actually going to use some mesh to reconstruct things. The mesh is kind of like the same sort of material you have on your fly screen door. It's a synthetic mesh. We're going to just cut our mesh to size and then suture it in place. It's closing really nicely. With the lump removed, Ben now has the tricky task of trying to stitch up the gaping space. Surgery's gone really nicely. She's been nice and stable throughout aesthetic. I think it couldn't have gone smoother. Now it's sort of onto the post-operative recovery and hopefully in a couple of days she'll be feeling a lot better. Oh, she did so well. I know. The biggest challenge ahead for Heather will be keeping her feisty Wolverine calm and quiet as she recovers. I can't tell her to sit quietly with her feet up. She's not going to do that. Cats have got a mind of their own with recovery. I don't know full well that Tabitha is probably not going to follow my instructions. You are so brave. You can do it. Swallow, swallow. Isn't that nice. At Sash in Western Sydney, Mara and Nurse Sarah are feeding activated charcoal to stubborn Pomeranian Zach, who is still refusing to vomit potentially poisonous grapes. Yeah. Oh, good boy. <laughs> the charcoal will bind to any deadly toxins in his stomach and hopefully prevent fatal kidney damage. Is that nice? <laughs> he says no. No, that's not nice. Good. Nice job. Oh, so good. Nice job. Wow. Look at you. You're a rock star. The hope is that he is going to be one of those lucky dogs who doesn't develop toxicity regardless of what we do. And that hopefully the charcoal that we've given him just gives us that little bit of extra safety. Can we take this off of you? Pop! Hi. I think that's about all we're gonna get. Well done! For Ona Sally, it's been a nerve-wracking wait. You have the bravest little boy. He's he been was a so good. Boy. He's, too, he's a brave he's little boy. He's little, but he's so, so brave. So good. Good boy, Zach. We'll have him go home with yeah. you and just keep an eye on him. Yeah. If he starts to seem really sad yeah. and lethargic, yeah. if you're seeing that he's not eating, yeah. if there's any change in how much water he's yeah. drinking or how often or how yeah. much he's and urinating, so, yeah, yeah, those okay. would all be indications that he should get rechecked and you're yeah, welcome to bring him back in yeah. here to us. Yeah. Um, if he does great, yeah. then he's the luckiest little boy ever. So I'm feeling really, really relieved at the moment. And I can come back tomorrow if I have to. I know they're here, so I feel really good. No yeah. more grapes. Okay. <laughs> Definitely no more grapes. Yes. We've learned the hard No way. more grapes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Say thank you. You say goodbye. Oh, you did yeah. 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 A brief goodbye. He's like, well, I like you, but that was more than enough. So gosh, I really hope that Zach is going to be one of the lucky ones. You know, he's got a great family and hopefully that if any problem develops, they can catch it right away and bring him back to us. But crossing fingers, he'll go home and just wonder if it was all a bad dream. That was good, wasn't it, Zach? Hey? Oh, so I'm just curating or scraping, if you like. The joint is just falling apart. Near Sydney, Pepsi's fragile bones are making foot realignment surgery extremely challenging for Rob. The bones of the joint are so soft, they're allowing it to just fuse in quite easily. Hopefully it will work by helping to solidify and calcify this area up. All those little bones of the wrist will start healing together. It's stiff, but supportive. Yep, that will do us. Right now we're going to take our first intraoperative just to see we're going to put the first pin. Okay, let me go and check. I'd love to get three pins in there, I don't know if I will. We'll certainly get two. 
Okay, so that's good, perfect. That tells me where I want to go. Feels okay. First thing we'll see if this pin's in the right position. If it is, we'll cut and then reline one on the other side, coming across so they actually fall across. And we'll think about putting one right down the middle as well. Probably will because of the softness of this bone, give it as much support as we can. Okay, we're in the radius. Got it. I'll tell you what, I'm happy with the way this feels. It gets nice and stiff, which is what we're trying to do. That's with two pins. If we can get a third pin in, I'll be even happier. I can't be unhappy with that. That's good. So I've got the third pin in. It's really stabilised that joint. I'm, I'm, as much as we can do for Pepsi at this stage. So now we'll sew it up, get out of here and get down to the toes. After nearly four gruelling hours, the surgery on Pepsi's leg is almost complete. So, yep, yeah, pin number four, now it's in the toes. That toe is starting to straighten up, but this toe is even straighter. And these two look straight, so that's as happy as I can get at this stage. That is really good. A bit of relief of have come to the end of a very long journey, very long journey. We're done. Oh. At the moment, life of Pepsi right now is going to be staying in the clinic for even possibly longer than I thought. Certainly a few weeks till the stitches are all out and I can see how things are starting to mend. I don't want any pressure on all those pins for, for a little while. And I can look after him easier in hospital than he can ever be looked at anywhere else at the moment. Good boy, you stay there and rest, okay? I'll come back and check on you later. In Bondi, Isabella needs to interrupt playtime to round up her Australian shepherd, Miko, for a visit to see Kate. Got Miko when she was eight weeks old, so like the very second that you can get her, I got her. I always wanted a working dog. They're super smart and super loving and yeah, I just wanted all of those elements in one. Miko has a worrying issue that Isabella wants Kate to check out. I noticed a few times at the park that she was kind of limping on her back leg a little bit. She'd be playing and then she'd lie down. What's going on? What's going on? You know, check. Over time, it just seemed to get to a point where I felt like it was causing her discomfort. Hello. Hi, how are Hello. you? Who's that? How are you? Doing well. That's good. Hello, Hello. darling. Look at you, you've grown so much. Remember when you were this big? I remember when you were this big. Mm -hmm. She's definitely going to go for a belly roll. Are you going to come through so I can have a look at you? Oh. <laughs> do you like a scratch on the tummy? Yes, I do. Come on, little monkey. Yes. Let's go. Miko is not the first puppy Isabella has brought in to see Kate. Izzy's previous dog, Cora, uh, and I should say puppy really because she was so young. She was only about 12 or 13 weeks when she came in. We found that she had a very rare genetic heart condition called Wolfhausen-White syndrome. And that led to this little puppy going into congestive heart failure when it was only 12 weeks old. It was so devastating. Her body was just not working for her. And Kate told me that she had about three months to live. So we got to spend a great three months with her, but it was really hard. It was horrible. It was the most unfortunate event that I've ever been through. It was heartbreaking. Hey, you ready, Anne? Ready? One, One, two, three, go! Well done. Um, so before we start, tell me about what's been going on. I feel like she just has a little bit of a limp in her back left leg. It comes and goes. Mm -hmm. She loves to play at the park. Okay. At speed, she's fine. After she plays with dogs, especially big ones, yeah. she kind of walks away with a little bit of a limb. Okay. And then she'll lie down. She's been well otherwise. Has she been eating and drinking and doing all the right things? She looks like super she's healthy. Been great. She's been really good. Yeah. She's a little minx because she's 
eight months old, but she's great. When Izzy got Miko, I felt like she was a little ray of sunshine and I was like really hoping that there was nothing wrong with Miko at any point. I'm trying to feel a good leg first. Yes, good girl. Yeah. See, it's okay. Mm. So as you can see, it's very difficult she has a personality. to see what's yeah. painful and what's not painful yeah. because she will scream and yell. <coughs> that doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what you can see today is that Miko isn't having any of this. She's squealing and carrying on like a pork chop. And the reality is, is that it's very difficult to tell in a puppy of her age whether something's pain or whether she's just being a monkey. It's okay, good girl. I know, darling. With Miko suffering from a serious case of the wiggles, Kate decides to move the consult outside. Here we go. Come here, Chuck. Let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take her for a little bit of a run just to see if I can actually see any lameness in that back end or even in her front legs. Okay, so do you see? Come here. Guys, do you guys see that? To an untrained eye, Miko looks completely normal, but I can see she's pretty heavy in the front limbs. And that makes me automatically think, is there something wrong with her back legs? Well done. No one knows their dog better than the owner. And the reality is, is when Izzy says there's something wrong with her dog, I take that seriously. If there is something wrong with her legs, early intervention would be ideal. And I think what we might do is keep her here and take some x-rays. Okay. And I think that we get an answer, right? Yeah. The best case scenario is that these x-rays come back all clear. She might have pulled something a little bit like a human. What is the worst special. case scenario? So our worst case scenario is that she has some kind of genetic abnormality, something like a hip dysplasia, yep. or she's got some early signs of degenerative joint disease. Great. Hip dysplasia is a congenital abnormality which results in an ill-fitting ball and socket in the hip joint. I guess my worry around the x-rays would be whether there was a potential surgery that was needed to be done, or if there's something that's ongoing that's going to cause Miko trauma. We're going to do a right. There is no cure for hip dysplasia. At very best, you can give them new hips, but what it really means is a lifelong condition that causes them pain. It means they can't do regular dog fun things. It's, it's not a great life. Okay. My instant reaction is worst case scenario because of what happened with Cora. So. It's like I'm almost conditioned to feeling like that. This is not what I expected to see at all. I'm going to send these to a specialist just to be doubly sure. Oh my God, I cannot, I cannot handle to lose her. Come on, sweet. Let's go. Next day, a nervous Isabella is back to hear the results of the specialist's X-ray report. Hello! 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 Hi! Hello! Hello! Hi, Bella. You want to come and have a look at these X-rays? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Is let's just start with the good news. Okay. They're fine. They're all fine, right? They're all fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Oh, everything is fine. It's like my whole body just went. I'm so relieved. There Thank God. Ankle. So that's not to say that there's not some kind of a soft tissue injury there, or there's some kind of a muscle or a tendon or a ligament that's damaged, but it does mean that she doesn't have degenerative joint disease in any of her elbows, her back, and also means that she doesn't have any hip dysplasia. When I look at these x-rays, I'm so relieved. I'm trying to look for a fault and I can't see one and I'm cheering. So as you can see that the ball of this hip is really nice and snug in the pelvis, really okay. nice and snug in that hip joint. That's exactly what we're looking for. You actually have a dog with nothing wrong with her. Nothing wrong with her? Who knew that was possible? This has been a really emotional roller coaster for Izzy. I feel like as though I have been here through that whole journey and to deliver her some good news for once is unbelievable. What I do want you to do from here though, so a few rules. As you can see from these x-rays, she still has a lot of growth plates there. This is the edge of the tibia and this is actually a growth plate in here. Eventually that little tibial tuberosity is actually going to form a beautiful joint. 
and all it would take is a very small amount of pressure on one of these to displace those growth plates. Wow, yeah, okay. And then that whole piece of bone basically can fall off. So we're not out of the woods yet. You need to be very careful that you don't injure those bones. Okay. And the best way is controlled exercise, so not letting her go for an hour at the park absolutely nuts. Yeah. Doing high impact activity would be sort of equivalent to a child doing weights, right? Their bones are soft, their growth plates are soft. We need to make sure that we look after them. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Good girl. Good boy. Well done. It's been a month since Rob operated to try to correct Pepsi's badly deformed leg. He's using that well. So Will has brought Pepsi in today. We've taken the splint off and the bandage is now right off. That's it. Pepsi. Good boy. Look at him go. Boop, 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 boop. Hello, darling. Good boy. Good boy here. Good boy. The foot's slightly turned in still, but I'm pretty happy because it was right around. The foot was nearly facing his nose before, whereas now he's using it and hopefully he'll use more of the pad. What I'll do is put a protective sock on it so that will help him and see how he goes over the next couple of months. Good boy. Good boy, Pepsi. And there's great news. Foster carer Will has fallen in love with the beautiful, gentle Samoid and decided to adopt him. We're talking about the possible second surgery, looking like we're not going to need that. Some physiotherapy, sure. I'll just keep watching him and make sure he just progresses because he is such a beautiful soul, that dog. Ready? <laughs> and Isabella and Miko are now back enjoying playtime at the park. I know, it's so exciting. But with a few new ground rules. Hi. We're doing one leash walk a day and then one trip to the park. But the park is nice and contained, not for too long. Just like Kate said, very minimal impact. She loves to swim, so we're always going to the beach. But yeah, just with a little bit of caution throughout the way. Too much energy. The happier that she is every day, the more joy she brings to our family, and we're just so grateful. Nico, what's going on? If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.